point, uh, chapter 14 from verse uh, uh, 20 to 27. I'm reading John 14. And uh, I don't know if, David, are you, you know how to get that? Okay, if you can, that's all right, so that you can put the note. Uh, so this is why, no matter how uh, technology sometimes can be a dangerous thing when we depend on it too much, amen. All right, so if you have your Bible, you open to John chapter 14 with me. If not, write it down and just I'll read uh, carefully so that you can follow me. In that day, you will know that I... I am in my Father, and you are in me. I'm using the English Standard Version this morning. And in you, 21, whoever, ha- whoever has my commandment and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is one of the reasons I'm using this uh, translation, the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. This is all, that is what changes the story of your life as a church going person or a Christian by name. The Holy Spirit is ever there, but it is the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit that changes the story of a man's life. And I read that verse 21 again. Whoever keeps my commandment and keeps them, whoever hears my commandment and keeps them and loves me, he who loves me I will be loved by my Father, and I will, I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, now said unto him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. You can underline verse 23 again in your Bible. And he will keep my word and my father will love him and because he keeps my word. And, and he will come to him and we will make our home with him. Hmm. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the, and the word that you hear is not mine but the father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am with you, 26, but the helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the word gives do I give to you? Let not your heart be troubled, neither be troubled, neither you be afraid. Do not let your heart be troubled, do not be afraid, do not worry. My peace I live with you, the peace I give to you is not as the word given. And he said, my father will send the comforter, the helper, and he will come to you. And he would take from that which is mine and make it known to you. In, he says in, in, in one of the, in the verses, he said, The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And the flesh counts for nothing. My father loves the one who keeps my word. Everything is about the word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will endure forever. Not just the hearers of my word, but the one who keeps my word and the one who does my word. And this is what changes the whole story. That that what differentiates me and the other person is not about how many scriptures I can quote and how well I can preach or sing, but am I a keeper of his word? Am I a doer of his word? In Acts chapter 1, when the writer began to introduce him, and he said this is the beginning of what Jesus began to teach and to do. It is one thing to teach, it's another one to do it. The world is not looking for more preachers and more. The, the world does not need new revelation. 
They're just looking for men and women who are living that which they have heard. They just want to see us. Romans 8 says the whole world is groaning in pain. Again, waiting for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. How many of us was here last Sunday? Did you think about it? Because we're back again to the same. Did you, I'm not asking you to answer me, but did you take your time into ask yourself and you're sure that you have the Holy Ghost inside of you? That was the last question I asked us because, again, I'm going to take my time this morning. I'm going to slowly get us into it and see how far we can go because there's no competition here to try to get everything. But I want you to leave with something this morning again. And the question is, do you have the Holy Spirit? In Acts chapter 19, where we read last Sunday, and that was the question. I said, do you have the Holy Spirit? And we didn't even know that that was the Holy Spirit. I've been coming to church, and I thought I was doing okay. <laughs> right. And they said, no, there's more to just coming to church. You just need the Holy Ghost. You need the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and again, I want to make a disclaimer this morning. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, just like I said last Sunday, and every time is a very controversial something topic, and every, but the funny thing, I was thinking about it again, deeper and deeper. Every time you hear, especially within the charismatic Pentecostal cycle, the moment you hear about the Holy Spirit, what comes to mind is speaking in tongues. 99% of the time. When they hear the Holy Spirit, the only thing they think you can identify the Holy Spirit is by speaking in tongues. And I will say this controversially, like I said. It's not only born again people that speak in tongues. That's number one. Speaking in tongues does not mean that you are holy. That's why I say it's controversial. Now I'm coming to that. Speaking in tongues is a power gift. Just like the working of miracles and healing and all that is power, part of the power gift. And then, the only that controversial thing about tongues is that the tongues that is orchestrated, engineered by the Holy Spirit is not gibberish. I'll give you an example now. In my country... That there is over, without over exaggeration, if there's over 500 dialects or more. In the village I show you, it's about one hour away from where we have uh, the first Gilgal. Now, between those two villages, uh, those two towns, there are about three villages that don't understand each other. <laughs> they just give you an example. Right? So, why am I saying that? Like I said, part of the testimony I shared last Sunday. When a man, when the Holy Spirit empowers you to speak, because the, 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 the thing about speaking in tongues is this. I want to do that to take that out of the way. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. It is important for you, if you can, to desire that gift because the enemy is not omnipresence. This is my understanding. So, when, you, when the Holy Spirit gives you a tongue, is a known language somewhere on the face of the earth. No matter how it sounds like gibberish to the person. That's number one. And one of the reasons is this. Because the devil is not omnipresent, he cannot understand, he doesn't understand all languages. So when the Holy Spirit is praying through you, it's confusing to the enemy in that territory. That is one of the reasons. 
that we speak in tongues and we pray. That's why Paul says, do as much as you can to pray in the spirit. But praying in the spirit, just like prophesying and healing miracle, does not mean that that person is right with God. There is more to the Holy Spirit than speaking in tongues. That is my point. Because there are a lot of people who are speaking in tongues in the church, and boy, their private life is terrible. There are a lot of people who are prophesying every Sunday, preaching every Sunday, even before the congregation of the Lord. And then when you go back and see what they do after church, you're like, how can you... This thing does not correspond. And so don't just settle for the fact that you can speak in tongues and the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you have the gift of speaking in tongues. That does not really just validate your relationship 100% with the Lord. You can choose to believe that or not, but this is my take on it. Right. Second thing, as we talk about the Holy Spirit quickly this morning. One of the reasons why the things of the Spirit and the Scripture is hard for us to discern and to understand is that we have been so conditioned as a people, a community of people in this generation to we have turned God to Santa Claus. Paul says, if only in this world you have hope. You have all men most miserable. Because every time we read the scripture, all we think about is here and now. There is nothing wrong with that. But if that is the only reason why you are following after God, the Bible says what? You will be of all men most miserable. So in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, he said the kingdom of God is what? It's not a meat and drink. It's not just about what I will wear, where I will live, who I will marry, how I will get healed. All is part of that. Those are just addition. That is not the main thing. You see, if that is the only thing you focus on, you see, when you hear the Holy Spirit, when you pray, when you hear the word, where does your mind go to? Then it becomes very difficult to grow in the things of the Spirit. He said, the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but it's joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, 17. You can write this down. The Holy Spirit, again, is not a mystic force. The Holy Spirit is not an impersonal person like the Superman that you call upon. It's not a genie you put in your pocket. He's a person. The Holy Spirit is a divine being with emotion and with will. So like I said to you last Sunday, I'm saying all this to tell you, to share with you some few things about the character and the person of the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit be a field with the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Ghost came on him for service. But when the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you become an embodiment 
This is where Paul said, this is my prayer that Christ be formed in you. And so when the Holy Ghost has filled me up, then I have no option but to begin to exhibit the character of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can come upon me to manifest his gift through me. But for him to be able to live in me, there is no way the Holy Spirit can live in me and in char- his character will not manifest through me. Do you, I don't know, is that, are you getting the difference now? And so you don't get, don't get deceived or get fooled by the fact that if I can come in here if there is a need, which we're going to do at the end of the service right now, and I'm going to believe God for it. If there is a need, Jesus says something here. One time, he said when he came in, he saw that the man had faith to be healed. Some of the things that happen to the ministry, that's why I always say it, which may, people may not agree, nobody has a healing ministry because nobody can heal nobody. Jesus heals to us. You know what I mean? Uh huh. And so, when there is a need in the house, your faith, I can be as wrong as can be right now. Praise God, I'm not. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but because there's a need in you, and I'm available verse right now, the Holy Ghost can come upon me, and I pray with you, and something happens. So that was the Holy Ghost manifesting to me. Right? And then I can step out 30 minutes later and you can see me take off my shirt and I'm fighting somebody. Right now, the same person. (laughs) Right? Because he walks through me but he's not in me. Amen. Does that make sense now? All right. What is character? David, look at that red thing. You can see the number one, and you can put it there. Uh, I put some some notes there too, just a few things this morning. In the PowerPoint. If you bring it up and shift it there. Okay, character. character. Character is who you are. Not what you are. Character is who you are. Character is moral excellence and firmness. There is a great difference between character and manners. (laughs) Manners is what you do to look good before people. You know how we used to tell our children when a visitor is coming and we promise them candy if you can behave, if you can try to (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean if you can just clean up your room because I know you are naturally dirty right, your character is but if you can put up a good show <laughs> if you can put up a good show for one hour, I promise you candy right and so that is why we fall victim to people you remember, uh, some of us here who have, uh, have our heart broken and torn to shred was because they came to us with good manners, right? You as a lady, when you met him the first time, he's always opening the doors for you, you know, and he's just like, no, it, you know, he has this aura of a perfect gentleman, and then you fell, Right? And then six months later, you came to church with the dark glasses on, with a black patch. The same gentleman has become a monster. That was his real character. And so don't mistake manners. It's good to have good manners, but you can have good manners for public appearance and have a terrible character. I don't know, is is that making sense now? Right? So good manners are the outward expression of 
a good godly character. That, that is the way it should be. It should be an outward expression. Right? And so bad manners is an outward expression too of a terrible character. You can fake your character. No, you can fake your manners, but you can't fake character. Right? You can I can fake to be a good man, to get close to you. I can fake to be a good woman, to get close to you, because I know what I'm looking for. Why are people falling victim to scams all over the world? Because the person doesn't come to them looking like a terrible person. Nobody comes to you and say, I'm going to scam you. Nobody comes to you and, and say, I'm, gonna t- I'm taking you for a ride. I just want to use you. No. Because if they come that way, you will not fall for it, no matter how foolish you are. That's why the devil does not come with peach, with fork and a wrong tail. He doesn't wear red dresses and uh, a horn on his head. He comes dressed in Prada, like they said. He's all dressed up. <laughs> Amen. He looks cool. Sleek. Nice. Until. <laughs> right. This is what happens to, to, to people, right? And so, for a man or a woman to have good manners, Without godly character, that is nothing but behavior modification. And that is what is being taught all over the world. Modified behavior. But the Holy Spirit does not come in to modify my behavior. He comes to transform. <laughs> He comes in and then he transforms me from the inside out. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will know that which is good. And because if it is good, it will be pleasing to God. And if it is pleasing to God, then it is perfect before God and man. That is Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. And so people who have behavior modification, they are the ones who are doing the good works. Philanthropists, for instance. <laughs> huh? You have a lot of people who are doing philanthropic work and they are pedophiles. That's the truth. They are doing all those good works, charity works, and they are child traffickers on the side. And they use good works to cover their character. When we go to Africa, I always tell them that right away. I say, listen, uh, we are, I'm not a charity organization. I'm not here to do, I'm not a philanthropic. I'm not a good person. I have one motive. I'm not doing it for nothing. I'm not, we are not doing this. We're not spending all this money for nothing, just for the fun of it to look good. I say, what we are after is nothing but your soul for Jesus. I said, this is my agenda. And because the agenda is spelled out up front, black and white, then I need not just to talk about Jesus, I need to look like him, act like him before them. So at the end of the day, God is not, the reason why the Holy Spirit comes into you, because God is not just interested in your doing, he is more interested in your being than in your doing. So Matthew 7, Jesus said you can do all this and still end up not connected to me. Everything mentioned in Matthew 7 are the gift of the Holy Spirit, but not the character and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. 
They are gifts that are given because of the love and the mercy and the compassion of God for mankind. That does not validate me in relation to God. That I can prophesy, that I can speak in tongues, that I can walk miracles. As wonderful as that is, how can I raise the dead that got a whole town to talk about me for weeks? And I'm on every newspaper and news media. And the one in whose name I did that does not even acknowledge it. And say, I know you not. You are still a worker of iniquity. That should get you thinking. First Corinthians 13 verse 1 to 3. You can write it down quickly. You say, if I speak in tongues of men. Look at that. Huh? I speak in tongues of men and angels and have no love. I am nothing but a noisy, clanging symbol. If I have prophetic powers, huh? if I have all this, who is love? God. And you cannot have the fullness of God and the Holy Spirit in you and not walk in the totality of that. And say, if I can speak in tongues, nobody spoke in tongues like Paul. Nobody encouraged speaking in tongues like Paul. But yet you say, you can do all that. You can write this down. You see, one of the things that people also get so wrong about the Holy Spirit is this. Because it's gentle, kind, non assuming, not pushy, not manipulative, we tend to commonize him. That he commonized himself to be rich, able does not mean he is common. We still have to treat him with reverence and respect and honor. So that's where we grieve the Holy Spirit. We grieve him when we commonize him, when we treat him shabbily, when we acknowledge him, as the, uh, you know, the way we, and for me too, I have to keep repenting lately myself because I became, I realized that I get so caught up. We all get caught up in this church. Slangs. Let's invite the Holy Ghost. I know he's here. Amen. <laughs> you can't invite him to his own party. <laughs> mm -mm. You just acknowledge his person because I'm a carrier of him. If I'm inviting him, that means I didn't come with him. If I'm inviting him, what I'm saying by implication is that it's not in me. Because if it's in me, I'm not going to invite him. All we need to ask is for his manifest presence. For those who don't know him, to know him. Because it's already in us. Amen. Quickly, I, you can write this down so that I'll just mention it because we'll not have time to talk about all of them. One of the characters of the Holy Spirit is number one, he's holy. Two, he's all knowledgeable. Three, it ha he has a will. Four, he has a mind of his own. Number five, he is very kind and compassionate. And all this has a scriptural reference over there. Six, he is love. He is forgiven. Amen. Eight is the God of all truth. You remember when Jesus said to them in John chapter 8, he said, you are liars <laughs> like your father who is the father of all lies. 
The Holy Spirit can't lie. It's completely impossible for him to lie. That's one of his character. It's all knowing his intelligence and good. He has all wisdom and understanding. You can grieve him. And he is also fearless. And all the scriptures. But I just want to just touch on one today because for sake of time, then we'll pray. Number one, the holiness. Holiness is the habit of being one mind with God. Hating what he hates. Huh? So how can you be filled with the Holy Spirit and don't hate what God hates? Number two, I want to say that and then we'll pray. It's all knowing. He has all knowledge. And where does he get the knowledge from? From the scripture we read in in John 14. He says what? Jesus says, my word, the one who keeps my word. And he says, read John 14, where we read now. And he said, it would take from what is mine. What is it going to take from? The word. And make it known to you. And so Paul prayed in Colossians 3. He said, let this word of Christ dwell in you richly. And so for you, you cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. And not converse with him. Because the, only, the, the Holy Spirit will only have conversation from this platform. Jesus said he would take from what is mine and make it known to you. And this is what he takes from. He takes from the word. The word that is already dwelling inside of you. The word that has become flesh in you. So when you are going through your trials and struggles... And the enemy is trying to lie to you. And say, no, no, no. And then suddenly the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance. And Timothy. And they say, no, God is not giving you the spirit of fear. But of power. And of a sound mind. The memory of the just is blessed. I'm a God of all knowledge. I'm a spirit that knoweth all things. So don't ever believe the word of the liars that said you are ignorant, you are dull, you are stupid. No. Because when you carry him, when you are filled with him, when you are submerged in him, everything about you changes. We'll do more. On Wednesday, because I want us to pray this morning. I gave an illustration on Wednesday, and I want to do that as we pray this morning. In Acts chapter 4, verse 31, And when they had prayed, I read that, the place was shaken, and they were assembled together, and they were all filled. Filled. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1 and 2, you will hear they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. In Colossians, the Bible said, by him all things consist. In John, it said, without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. And that life was what? The light of of the world. And the light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot comprehend it. In John chapter 4, verse 10, we know, they know the story of the woman by the well. And we don't need to go into that because of time. And Jesus said to the woman in verse 10, If only you know the gift of God. I love that verse. If only you know, because the Holy Spirit is a gift. If only you know the gift of God. And who is he that is speaking to you, you would have. Ask me, 
and I will give you this living water. And he said, whoever I give this water to, out of them will begin to what? So, I, if I get you submerged in him, and so for me, this is how I see being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, by him all things consist. He, that means, to consist means holds together. The word is in the palm of his hand. The what is holding the word together is not your government, it's not a legislation. When you, the absence of the Holy Ghost from this world right now, uh, there will be chaos. The reason why the Antichrist have not gone all full blown, the reason why the lawlessness has not gone haywire is because the Holy Spirit has not been lifted. The moment he goes, that is the end. But this is the world. This is how we are when we get born again. We get born again into the Lord. Right? Born with the Holy Spirit. This is the way I understand it. This is you. You get born again in God. And then, out of you will flow what? I will give you the water, which is also what? A symbol of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, if anyone tastes, let him what? Come and drink. And so, being filled with the Holy Spirit, this is my empty, and I get into the Holy Spirit, I get filled. But being filled simply means I am in Him. In Him I live, in Him I move, in Him I have my being. When a man or a woman is filled with the Holy Spirit, when he becomes a carrier of God inside of him, there is everything about you who's God. Your marriage is not separate. Your finances, your children, your job. You cannot be a Christian at home and be a terror at your workplace. It is not possible when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. People like Moses in Psalm 91 saw it from afar. And they began to say it in passing as a type. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He will say of the Lord, he is not coming out of the shadow. He is still in the secret place. And when he gets submerged in the secret place, he doesn't leave because he will just come out a little bit under the shadow. And from the shadow, he say, he will say of the Lord that the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. What can man do to me? I'm too secured in the Lord. To be touched. My life is hidden in Christ. This is the Holy Ghost speaking. My life is hidden in Christ. Christ in God. Undescribable layer of defense and protection. And so when the Holy Spirit told us. David take it and let's see the wall there. When we came out. With the word secured in him. It's not just to get a phrase going. The Lord is just saying, this is what, this is our story. Right? Secured in him. My life is hidden in Christ. Christ in God. There is nothing that anybody can do to me. If God be for us, who can be against us? I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. What can man do to me? The covenant of divine preservation 
speaks for the one who is filled with the Holy Ghost. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everyone. To your children, my children, it is okay to come to church. It's okay to know the Bible. Wonderful to know, you know, from Genesis to Revelation. It's wonderful if you can preach and teach at the same time and you can carry a chorus. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, then it's not okay. The Holy Spirit eliminates spiritual nonsense from your life, from my life. The Holy Spirit empowers you. You shall receive power. Right? Acts 1.8 here. As on this altar, is not just for a show. You will receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you and in you, and you shall become my witnesses. The witness there is not to proclaim. It is to become a living epistle read of man. And so the Holy Ghost comes to empower me to speak the language of God in love, in compassion, and with the glory of God. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? He said, be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Not just with wine. Are you struggling with issues in your life this morning? The antidote is the Holy Spirit. Are you dealing with stuff that you don't know how to deal with? You need the Holy Spirit. And all you need to do is to ask him. And like I said, that's why I took it out of the point here this morning at the beginning. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. The real evidence of the Holy Ghost is character transformation. Not miracles. Miracles are just a byproduct. The real evidence of a man or a woman who has been filled with the Holy Spirit is character transformation. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The man I was yesterday is not the same man. I died. And Christ now lives in me. The life I live in the flesh now I live by faith. It is no longer I that live it, by Christ, but Christ that lives in me. Shall we all stand up this morning? If you can't stand, just sit down. But I want you to pray for yourself. If you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, if you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I don't believe that it should be any kind of mechanic stuff. He just come because he's a gentle, tender being. He is a father. He's kind and he's compassionate. He comes to play the role of a father in our lives. If you want to know how to be a good father, get filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to know how to be a good mother, get filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to know how to be a good wife, get filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to know how to be a good husband, get filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to be a good child in the school, get filled with the Holy Ghost. I just want you to just, if you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit this morning, just begin to ask God. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Empty yourself so that he can fill you. If there is anything that you think will stand between you and God this morning, start by confessing and say, Lord, forgive me. You see, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, if we say we have no sin, we lie and the truth is not in us. 
And that is where we begin. We begin in humility. It is me, O oh Lord, that needs you. Lord, forgive me my sins. I yield myself to you willingly this morning. I empty myself of my pride, my ego, my know-it-all. Pride is a sin. My religious hang up and everything. And just lift up myself to you this morning. And say, Holy Spirit, come. 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 And you can receive him this morning. And he can even open your tongue to begin to speak in a new language like never before. Without any struggle. If you are ready, can you just lift up your hands as a surrender? If you want to, just lift up your hands with me. Just lift up your hands this morning, in faith this morning. And just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love. And I thank you for your kindness. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Hungry, empty, empty of self, empty of my religious hang up, empty of my pride, my ego. Cleanse me of every sin, known and unknown. Lord Jesus, I open myself up for your visitation. I ask in faith and in humility this morning. Lord, I desire a fresh gift and auction of the Holy Spirit. Lord, give me the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Just begin to thank him right now. That all. Just begin to thank him. 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 If you've said, if you prayed that prayer as simple as it is, just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him for the gift, a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon you. Just begin to thank him by faith that you know that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit. Thank him and say, I'm stepping out of this service today, a different woman, a different man. My life will no longer be the same. The character of Jesus, the Holy Ghost, will begin to manifest through me. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Thank him. Somebody right now, that, that, that anger that you've been struggling with, the Spirit of God has just broken it free out of your life right now. You, you struggle with anger. And right now, I sense that just by stepping out in faith, just speaking this word this morning, the Holy Ghost have done it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Descend upon this house. Let it be an overflow to our home after the service in the name of Jesus. Do something new, something wonderful in the heart of everyone here, both those at home and here this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, immerse us in the Holy Spirit this day in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing, let there be deliverance, let there be forgiveness, let there be restoration, even just by this encounter in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated briefly in the presence of the Lord. The children are coming to give us the benediction.